Okay, welcome back. So here is the solution from our last class where we said we wanted to uh, write a program. Actually, we don't need C string here. I don't know why we have that. We um, wanted to write a program such that it would replace a word in a string. So let's, let's run this. Let's just show you, and then we'll go through what it looks like. Uh, just a second here. So when I run this, I um, it says enter a sentence. Okay, so I might say something like the big dog. And now it says enter the word to delete. And I'll say big, or maybe the word to replace and enter another word which replaces the deleted word and I'll say small. Okay, And then it says the small dog. So it works. Let's see if it works when I if I was to run it but the word appears more than once. Uh, big big dog big small 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 dog okay that works so let's go through the code and um, I'm string s is the string that the user types in uh, old word is the word they want to delete or replace and NW is the new word now POS it stands for position, but it's I'm using the type uh, size t, and size t is an unsigned int. Okay, now if you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because I want the POS position data type to match what is returned by find. So I actually have three different solutions here. Um, so let's go solution number one and solution number two and solution number three. Although I'm not a big fan of solution number three it's because it's a f I'm using a for loop. I just wanted to show that it is possible, and I am using a for loop here. Let's take a look quickly at this for loop. Find the old word and assign it to POS. If POS is not equal to string NPOS, where string NPOS is what is returned if it's not found. Now notice this is not not found, which means found, right? And uh, when you increment the position the next time through, find the next uh, location of the old word. And every time you find the word, then go to that position and replace that many characters, old word dot size, with the new word. That's the way dot replace works. Now, okay, that that's a very unusual way to do this with a for loop. So let's kind of comment this out, and um, let's see how it would work with a different solution. Here's my here's the first solution that I kind of wrote. And this one says, this one is much more intuitive in terms of the way I would program. This one says, find the location of the old word. And if it's not equal to not found, which means it is found, then find the position again. So in other words, this is only giving me, finding the position simply here is providing me with a true or false does it exist in, the, in S. Okay. Um, now, remember, string NPOS is 
returned only if the string is not found. Okay. Uh, I think if you like cast that into uh, an integer, I think it ends up being negative one. But size t is um, an unsigned int, so we're good here. Okay. So it like it's not negative one. I'm just saying it, we're not going to cast it. Um, now. The next thing I do is I find the location, and again, I replace the old word with the new word. That many characters. So I'm go doing old word dot size. That's the way replace works. It says start at this location, replace that many characters with that substring, NW. Okay? However, notice something interesting. I'm actually having to find the location twice of the old word. Once to determine if it's found, and I'm not doing anything with that value. I'm simply trying to say, does the word I'm trying to replace exist in string s? If yes, then go into the loop. If no, then skip the loop. But, but if it's true, if it does exist, then look what the first thing I do. I do the exact same command again. I say this time, store the location as POS. Okay? You can think of POS as an integer. Size t, as I said, is simply an unsigned int. Now, here's the interesting part, is that this solution that you're looking at makes sense but I didn't like it for the fact that I'm actually calling find twice. So how can I do this without calling find twice? Well, I'll show you. So what I do is, let me comment this out, and here's my solution number two. Now in solution number two, this might look very, um, so this, this might look very odd because I have an assignment, that's an assignment operator embedded inside a comparison operator that's going to give me true or false. So what this does here is it's saying, first of all, and notice I need these brackets here, so there's double brackets. Right? There's brackets for the while, then there's another set of brackets for the assignment. And what I'm saying is, I'm saying first assign s.find old word to, p to position, and then compare position with string npos. That's all happening on, the, on that one line. Okay. Sometimes you can use stuff like this also for function calls. Uh, and essentially, like, I am doing a function call there because s.find is a function call. But if you haven't seen this type of notation before, it might seem quite strange. But C, C++ allows you to do this, and it works. So by doing this, it allows us to circumvent uh, calling find twice. See? So this time, so like, let's run it. Let's compile it and run it. And we'll enter the sentence again. Big, big dog. And enter the word to delete. Big, small, and it works. Small, small dog. OK? So just the same. Uh, as before. However, so there is an inherent problem in this solution and it might not seem immediately apparent to you. So in other words, once again, I've solved this three different times. I would definitely recommend against using solution number three. This was just, solution number three was just a Let's see if we can do it using a for loop. 
I would not recommend using this type of a, a for loop for this type of a purpose. Okay. Uh, the what I like to iterate, or I should say, what I like to preach to my students is use a for loop for a known number of iterations. Use a while loop for an unknown number of iterations. So in this situation, a while loop would be more appropriate since we don't know how many uh, instances of the word to replace there are going to be since it's user input. So uh, as to which one I like better, solution one or solution two, I would say solution two is probably more efficient, although it might be slightly less um, understandable because there's a lot going on on line 35. Okay. So we still have a big problem with this solution, and that is, let me show you how it works. So let's run it again, and let's type in the sentence. Let's type in big dog, and I, I, I want to now replace the word big, and I'd like to replace it with, are you ready for this? Bigger. Uh-oh. Can you guys see what's going to happen here? I am now in an infinite loop. My program will never end because this string is always going to contain the word big. Since I'm always putting the word big back in there and I'm always looking for the term big, let's stop it. So that didn't work. That, that turned out to be an infinite loop. It's interesting, right? Because infinite loops are logic errors. There is no syntactic, no compiler error, nothing like that. It's a runtime error. Question is, how can we change this such that it would work? Let me give you guys a hint. OK, so the hint, if you'll notice here in the documentation, for find, it returns size t, but the first argument is, the, is um, the substring you're looking for, right? But the second argument has a default argument of 0, which is the location that you're going to start looking. So notice here it's POS, and it says position of the first character in the string to be considered in the search. So now you can specify where for it to look with find. And that's the key to getting this correct. All right, let's take a look at the solution here. So what we've changed here, this is a, a different program, uh, replace two. I now have pretty much the same code except for find now. I have a second argument which is no longer defaults to zero, but position. So initial, my initial value for position is zero. So I will start looking at, uh, from the beginning. But once I've replaced that initial copy of the word I want to replace, I'm going to increment POS past the end of the word that I've replaced. So let me show you uh, what this looks like in a diagram. OK, so here's a diagram. I've got the string big, big dog. And I'd like to replace the word big with bigger. So obviously, the, re the replacement string contains the original string. So if I replace this word here with bigger, I'm going to get, OK. Um, I should have actually maybe moved that over a little bit because I had more space. But my point here is that now, after this, I'm going to have a space, right? And then I'm going to replace 
this one with bigger also. So the way the code works, if you'll notice, is that position now that it starts to look for the word big is equal to the old position plus the new word size. Remember the original position was zero. So this here is going to be zero. And the new word is bigger, right? So if we go back, bigger is one, two, three, four, five, six. So zero plus six. So let's put the zero, one, two, three, four, five, and there's my six. That means zero plus six equals six. That means it's going to start looking for the word bigger here after the one that was just replaced. Not always from the beginning where it's going to find the word big. So that it's going to find the, you know, just this, not look at this right now. But now it's going to find the word big again after uh, on position, you know, after the space. Okay? So essentially, whenever it replaces something, it starts searching after what it has replaced. Not to include, even if the replaced word has the word big in it, it won't find this big again because it's going to start looking here. That's the concept. And there's the code. And if we let's let's run this and uh, verify that indeed it does work, so we'll compile it and run it, and we'll say big big dog, big bigger, and bigger bigger dog. Good job, it works. No infinite loop. Okay. All right, guys, the moment has arrived. So our next topic is going to be uh, vectors. And essentially, it is like an array. However, this is this vectors in C++, uh, C doesn't have this, and they can contain anything. So they're a generic container, like a Python list. And we're going to have to include vector in order to use it. And when we create a vector, all we do is we use the word vector and then we simply put in angled brackets the variable type, like for example an int, and then we have our variable name and we could use v okay so that's that's how much I'll show you right now just here but let's go into an actual uh, code to take a look at what it looks like so here it is here's here's a demonstration code of vectors and what I have here on line 35 is just what I showed you earlier. I'm declaring a vector v, but it has no size yet. So if I try to assign something to this vector, it I will th this one if I use dot at, it'll it'll uh, throw an out of bounds error. Okay, and if I try to assign it with angled brackets, it's going to throw a segmentation fault. So the reason for this is because the vector hasn't doesn't doesn't have any space to put anything in it yet. So to to put things to push things back into the vector, you use pushback. It's basically identical to append. Okay, so. What we're doing here is we're, we've now put the integer 3 in there, and we've put 4 and 5. So at location 0, 
in this vector we have the integer 3 and so on as, as you know going down so this is 0 1 2 locations now this that's one way of creating a vector another way is to actually create it and allocate size without initialization so if you use an angled sorry not angle if you use a round brackets here so remember we've done this uh, for an integer right so if we kind of go just just for a moment right if we go back here if you remember if I go int x and then I go bracket 1 what does that do that's the same as saying int x and then x equals 1 okay well that doesn't translate to vectors because if you look at the vector syntax that doesn't give you an initial value of 3 we're not putting a 3 in there what we're saying is that's how big we want it so it says here it creates the vector y with size 3 but no initialization has been performed so uh, if you see out this location now it's not going to cause an error but since you haven't initialized the data we don't know what's going to be it, you, you might end up getting zero or you might getting some garbage data that, that was previously uh, allocated by another program okay you can do assignment like this using dot at so you can assign stuff to variables that have been allocated and you can use square brackets as well for assignment so all all these three examples here are assignment okay um, once again the only difference is if you use dot at uh, you have bounds checking with this you don't okay with square brackets you don't but honestly though I think most people end up using uh, square brackets I, I when I look at other people's code a lot of people don't use dot at um, at least the code that I've seen now uh, allocation and initialization so this is kind of cool you can do both in one shot so in this situation what we're doing is we're saying allocate three integers in the vector and also assign them all the initial value of one that means that they're, they, they're all gonna have the same initial value of one does that make sense so z0 1 and 2 are all going to equal 1 so that works as well for for declaring and initializing declaring allocating and initializing whereas this with the curly braces is a C++ 11 in initialization list where everything happens at once so you allocate three and you assign them all to one, two, three. Now they don't have to be one, two, three, they could be anything. Does that make sense? Once again, I want to reiterate that you don't have to specify the size initially. Uh, this is just like an optional argument. A lot of times when I'm dealing with vectors, I will use pushback to put to put things into it as I require the vector to grow okay now let's take a look at the uh, printing of these vectors so these are functions that I've written above and I've I've written them uh, in a slightly different way the first print function returns void which return in fact they all return void because they're all just gonna print whatever's in there now here I have this function is going to accept a vector of integers and I'm calling it V I don't have to call it the same name by the way that's just my choice it doesn't matter what this variable is it doesn't have to be V however one thing of interest that I will note is that I'm using the const keyword here and what that means is that 
If I try and change the vector v, I will be unable to do that. So uh, in this situation, specifying const means that I'm actually not modifying anything. OK? Um, we'll, we'll get in more into const later. Um, but oftentimes, uh, maybe I'll just mention it now, const is often used with passing by reference. So when you pass something by reference and you don't want to be able to modify it, then you would use const. And we'll get into why that is beneficial a little bit later on. But for now, let's just focus on vectors. And here, I have declared an unsigned int x. And the reason why I've declared unsigned int is because if I just declare it as int, I'll get a warning. Because v.size is, is, <coughs> is going to return an unsigned int because v.size can't be negative. So and notice that I'm also declaring the for loop variable outside of the for loop. I could have just as easily typed in unsigned int right there inside the for loop. And here I'm going c out v at x, or I could have easily just done v square bracket like Python 0. Or sorry, not 0. In this case, that would be x. Oops. There you go. OK? So either of those two lines would work just fine. Now, I have another function called printvec11. And this is going to iterate using the auto keyword. And in this case, I'm not iterating over the indices. Notice here also, I may have just glossed over this, v.size is going to return how big the vector is. Okay. So, and you know, if, if the vector has 10 elements in it, then I want to iterate from 0 to 9, which is exactly what I'm going to get here, which is perfect. Here, on the other hand, I'm not iterating over the indices. I'm, iter I'm iterating over the elements of the vector directly. And, I, and once again, that's the newer way of doing it. Although, just like Python, you can choose which way you prefer to do it. Um, I will say that oftentimes this method is more versatile. The older way of doing it is, is I would say, sometimes more versatile, although this w method is less verbose. So yeah, in this case, we would just see out i. We don't need any brackets here at all. Okay. Now the other, there is a third way to do this yet again. And now comes the concept of an iterator. So an iterator, and I'm scared to, I'm, I'm about to say something, but I'm scared to say it. But it is similar to something we're going to learn in the future, and that is a pointer. But essentially, notice the the header of the uh, function is the same in all three cases, okay? vector int v. But here we're creating a vector int iterator called it, which stands for iterator. And this is just a variable. Then I'm going v.begin, which will be an iterator that points to the beginning of this vector and v dot n, which points to the end. And then I'm going it plus plus. Now, when I want to see the things inside of it, I use what looks like, which for all intents and purposes, is kind of like a dereferencing character, which is a star. Once again, we haven't learned pointers yet, so this is really might seem confusing. But uh, nonetheless, it is another, yet another way to iterate over uh, a vector. However, if you know these first two methods, 
then I would just stick to those right now. And then perhaps after we've learned pointers, we can come back and look at this again, or this might make more sense to you. Okay? So that's it for uh, this example. Let's, let's actually try running it and just make sure it works. Okay, it did not work. And what line was that error on? Okay, we found the error thanks to some smart students. Um, so because, I, because I'm de declaring this vector as const, I had to actually also declare the iterator as const. So now it'll work, and it runs without error. And if I get rid of this const here, I can then get rid of this const as well. And now it should work as well, and it does. But if we leave this const, oops then that's not going to work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to throw an error. There it is. OK. It even kind of tells us how to fix it right there. So although it, it's um, quite finicky in that way. So I think perhaps, for me at least, it's better if I just remove this one. I think it's simpler to understand. OK? Um, there you go. It works now. So once again, here is another example of uh, initialization lists. OK? And uh, So if I, if I run this one now, we get 1, 2, 3. And that's for x. Obviously, uh, I'm going to get the same thing for y. Notice, notice the slight difference in syntax. right? This is an equal sign. This is a curly brace. Let's see if it works for y as well. And it does. Okay. And let's see if Z works as well. Notice how Z is different. There's nothing in here. Personally, I I don't use this. Okay. Uh, I would either use this one or this one, but I wouldn't use this one. I'm even surprised that works. Uh, let's see if it works. And it works. We get one, two, three again. Um, and let's try this one. Um, let's actually perhaps make this slightly less. Let's just maybe get rid of, yeah, 10 is enough. Not 100. We don't need to see 100 things here. So let's now run this one. Oh, wait. I have to change this to A. OK. And let's run this one. And there it is, 10 ones. OK. So yeah, if you ask me, I'd probably pick this one or this one. I don't know why they have so many different ways of doing the same thing. I think it's un I think it's unnecessary. So here's another example. Kind of s similar vein, creating a vector v, push some numbers back into it. Okay, so we've kind of already looked at this. The only new thing here really is um We've created this new function called makeVec, where we say 1, 20. Let's take a look at this function called makeVec. And it's right here. 
And in fact, we've got, we've overloaded this function. So in one case, make vec returns nothing. Notice here, it's not making any, it's not returning anything. But notice it's being, the vector is being passed by reference. See the ampersand right here? Um, and, but in this case, this vector, this make vec function is returning a vector of integers. And its arguments are uh, two integers, low and high. So in this first one, we're creating a temporary integer vector going into a for loop from low to high and pushing back those integers into the vector. And then when we're done, we return the temporary vector we created. And as we said, we were going to return a vector of integers. So that's, that's one function. The other function okay, doesn't have to return anything because v is being passed by reference here. Okay? So when we modify v, we're actually modifying uh, the vector in the calling scope. Okay? And the two examples are Here is one example where you have the two integers returning a vector. And the other example is where you pass the created vector, the declared vector, by reference. Notice that the arguments are different. In this one, the arguments are integer, integer. In this one, the arguments are integer, integer, and then vector by reference. So there's no confusion as to which one is going to occur. OK, so another interesting thing that I can do with vectors, right? If I create a vector v and I go dot push back, whatever I push back in here will go in. If I push back again, right, with another something else, it goes in. I can also do dot pop back. And pop back doesn't take an argument, but what it'll do is it'll take out the last guy. Okay? There's a whole bunch of, um, let's take a look at all of the, uh, this, in fact, I can't even memorize all of them. The vector class has too many to memorize for me. Okay, so here are the, the here's the website with the um, references for vector. Here's iterators, begin and end are usually the only ones I use here. Capacity, uh, the only one I usually use is dot size. Right, we have the for accessing elements. You have the square brackets or uh, dot at. Okay, um, I don't know why you would use dot front because I think I would just go uh, bracket zero would be the front. Okay, um, the last element. Well, I guess you could use dot back, or you could use some combination of uh, dot size. Now, there's push back, there is pop back, which deletes the last element. There's also insert and erase. So insert, let's take a look at insert for a moment. Okay, Notice this takes an iterator position. You can actually specify this iterator position without having to use an iterator because you could just go like this. So let me show you here. So let's say you wanted to, let's say you had a vector that was like this, and um, let me move this a little bit. Let's say you had three, six, eight, and you wanted to stick in a seven right there. You could go v dot insert 
and go bracket now, you would go V, no, so notice the, right? It says iterator position, okay? So uh, let's go back here. So you'd go V dot begin plus, uh, I guess, th three. I think that would be three, and then comma seven. Okay. Um, or sorry, 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 sorry. No, I messed up here. I'm counting from one again. That's my bad. That'd be two, right? Because it's zero, one, two. So that'd be a two. So yeah, you got to start counting from zero. In in this way, essentially. Uh, if you go v dot begin plus an integer, it's going to give you an iterator to the location you want. So like I said, I only use begin and end, and that's one instance of how I would use it. Okay, You can also use that uh, technique for erase as well. Because if we go back uh, in t and look at erase, I believe that also takes an iterator as well. Yeah. Okay. You can also iterate uh, a, a range as well. Uh, sorry, erase a range. So that's pretty much it. Uh, another nice one, if you just want to erase everything, is uh, clear. And um, those are the important ones. OK, so how about a little assignment? How about uh, create a program that will make a vector of integers with random numbers, 20 random numbers from 10 to 99? Give that a shot.